If you're a hardcore trail runner, you would have likely been glued to your screen watching the recent UTMB that took place. The UTMB is regarded as one of the most competitive mountain-based trail races in the world that assembles a super pinnacle elite field. What many of us want to know is what shoes were the elites wearing, were there any trends and is there any indication on what the fastest trail racing shoe in the world is? The results are super interesting and the shoes worn by the elites might surprise you. So let's start off by looking at the original UTMB race which is the 171 kilometer race and discuss what shoes were being worn. I must give credit to Alex Fility of Meta Endurance for compiling these infographics together that I'll be using. Now what I find interesting about this infographic is that there's a variety of brands represented on the podium. And this is true for all the UTMB race results. When we look at road racing podiums, it's almost pretty predictable what shoes are going to be worn no matter what the road running distance is. It's really three to four shoes that dominate the scene. But this doesn't really exist in trail running. And as you can see, there's sort of a mixture of brands represented. And also gone are the days when Salomon dominated the trail podium. In first place on the men's side is none other than Kylian Jornet, wearing in fact his own brand he's recently developed called Normal. Word on the street is this exact pair of shoes he's, uh, he wore, he's in fact been wearing for a number of races, including the Hard Rock 100 and Zigama. So he's trying to prove a point that his shoes are durable and don't need to be chucked out after one or two races, but stand the test of time and durability. In the TDS, which is the 145 kilometer distance race that happens during UTMB weekend, this is really where things get interesting from a footwear perspective. Not only do we have a variety of brands showcased or found on the podium, but also a mixture of the different types of trail shoes that can be found in the market. For instance, the one runner is wearing a pair of gel trabucas by Asics, which is a very cushy and protective shoe, but not necessarily a very racy shoe. Then you would also find a shoe like the Salomon Pulsar Pro, which is the very opposite. It's a very race day specific shoe. It's interesting how we almost contrast in terms of the different types of shoes that can be found in the market on a single podium. Look, if you're running for 145 kilometers, you're on your feet for a long time. So it's no surprise that athletes are prioritizing comfort and wearing something forgiving over something fast. But it's just interesting how wide or how open the playing field is with regards to the footwear approaches athletes take on a single podium. This contrasts to road running where you can pick any big road marathon or ultra marathon and almost predict the two to three shoes that are going to dominate the podium and this will consistently happen in almost every big race. Some runners even switch their shoes up in a single race. For instance, the men's first place finisher here, Ludwig, he started out in a pair of Hoka Tecton X's, which is a more racier pair of Hoka's. And then somewhere in the middle of the race, he switched over to a pair of Speed Goats, which is more forgiving. And this is a nice tactical footwear switch that is pretty unique to trail running. Here is the OCC, which is the 55 kilometer race that happens over UTMB weekend. This race happens over mostly runnable trails, so we won't see anything too aggressive with regards to grip choices. But what's interesting again is the mixture of the different types of trail running shoes used in a single podium. We have something like the Scarpa Ribble Run, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which weighs in at 305 grams. While we also have something like the Adidas uh, Terex um, Speed Flow, which is approximately 225 grams. So there's an 80 gram weight in two different shoes on the same um, podium. This is significant as in the old days they used to speak of 100 grams in shoe difference being responsible for about 1% one, uh, 1 in energy savings, which is quite sizable. Um, and it just goes to show that preference is more key in terms of trail running shoes these days. And it's more important to feel comfortable and get along nicely with your footwear item as opposed to um, seeking those marginal 1% footwear uh, gains. To this point, the two Adidas runners here were wearing Speed Flows, which would technically be a takedown model of the brand's pinnacle lightweight trail running shoe, which is the Speed Ultra, which is in fact somewhere behind me here. So it's interesting that they've gone with the less, call it premium model, and clearly they must like the shoe and simply enjoy it and get along with it more, as opposed to trying to go with what is on paper the best shoe. Another interesting observation is that the ASICS athlete here is running in a pair of Fuji Light 3s. It's a shoe I've actually reviewed on this channel, so do check it out if you're interested. 
But essentially the Fuji Light 3 is a lightweight daily trainer that's neither a complete racing shoe nor a complete cushion shoe, but somewhere in the middle. And it doesn't have a rock plate. But because um, the OCC is a more runnable route and less technical, you can get away with wearing something that doesn't have that extra bit of protection or in the form of a rock plate or, or a well-stacked um, cushioning frame. But it's just an interesting choice of, of, a, of a racing shoe that doesn't have a plate to it. That wraps up what we've learned from the UTMB shoe podium. Let me know if you've enjoyed watching this and we can do it again soon. Thanks for watching.